All right, we'll get it rocking and rolling. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back. Um, today, we are talking about the 10 skills that everybody should be focused on here right now. Um, some wise, great person once said that it's the the skills to pay the bills. So that's why we're um, bringing this up here. And we're we're chatting with everybody today about these 10 important skills that we all need to focus on. So the first skill is the skill of learning how to pr practice and remove your ego. Uncle Tim, do you want to take us through that one? Well, any professional athlete who wants to be successful in their career practices, regardless of it's basketball, baseball, tennis, golf, everybody practices. Now, up until 1999, my father and I never practiced. We practiced at game time. And we didn't learn until we joined the Mike Ferry organization how important practicing is. And uh, you might think it's silly, but it's not silly. Because the better you learn your scripts and dialogues, and the more you practice, and the more comfortable you become objection handling, the easier it is to get business. And like I've been saying in some of my emails, it's like magic. Stuff start, starts happening when you, when you know what to say and know what to do. And the only way you can do that is to practice, not a game time before the game. So that, you know, I think that's a very important skill. So uh, number two here, we got the skill of managing your time um, to uh, obviously maximize productivity. So obviously we want to work smarter, not harder, Uncle Tim. Yep. Thoughts? Poppy, you want to expand on managing your time and how important it is to manage your morning schedule because you're a big time management person. Um, yeah, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Everything that you do in your work life and in your part time or your social life should be on some kind of schedule. <clears throat> when Tim and I started with Mike Ferry, we got up at 4.30 in the morning, walked for an hour, listened to our scripts and dialogues over a headphone set, and internalize them that way. In addition to that, we were at the office at 7.30 in the morning and we started preparing our day. Things are a little different now because we have a computer and it helps a lot. However, at that period of time, everything was done by hand. You had to be on schedule if at nine o'clock, you want to start banging the phone, or at 8.30, if you want to start banging the phone, you'd be calling your friends and centers of influence who you knew were up then, and you weren't infringing on their time. So that part of your schedule was in concrete. Then at 9 o'clock, you started what we called our prospecting time. That's our money generation time, and we would do that till 11.30. At that point, we were hoping to have 30 calls per day made by that period of time. Then you'd take a break and return your phone calls and do all the things that you hadn't done during your money-making opportunity time, which was 9 to 11.30. At that point in time, you'd catch up with everything, go to lunch, start back at one o'clock and from one o'clock you would schedule detail work um and get that out of the way after one you know after about 2 30 you would then prospect again if you hadn't made your 30 calls till you got them and then the rest of the day would be working on your detail work you're getting your appointments and going in on listing presentations in, in addition to yeah, in addition to that, Dad, you're able to have a personal life as long as you schedule it in. 
you're 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 right. It it yeah. it allowed us freedom that we never had before, because we we didn't feel guilty about not having stuff done. I know all of you get that feeling where you're saying to yourself, "Oh my God, I didn't get this done. I didn't get that done." Well, you will get it done if you start managing your time and believing that when you do this, you become more efficient and more efficient allows you to make more money. And that's what this whole scheduling thing is about, the freedom of having you able to be efficient at what you do. You are a pro. You know, uh, today, before we started here, we had a role-playing session, and I'm going to brag about my daughter. She said, when she came out of that today, she said, Dad, I was really good. You know, that's pretty cool to hear that, that, that you're making an effort to do and be better than you've ever been before. How many of you on this call can say that? You know, that th this is about being something special in your life, and you following that schedule will allow you to do it. Hey, Brooksy. Okay, so um, the next one we have here is the skill of asking good questions. Um, obviously, it's a, a very important point to be a good listener and asking good questions in, in real estate. Uncle Tim, Poppy, how did you, through your years at the Mike Ferry organization, you know, practice this and learn the questions to ask? Well, it's it's not internalizing the scripts gives you the questions to ask. But Mike had always said to us, selling is not telling. Selling is asking great questions. And the more questions you ask, the more information you get. And it leads you to what their purpose is of why they're selling. What's their motivation? What's their purpose? And when you understand and you get to that purpose and that motivation, it makes it a lot easier to close with asking great questions, but it takes questions. It's, it's not a matter of sitting here telling people how wonderful you are and how great you are and how many houses you sell. It's and a matter of asking questions. What's that, Dad? And how great the company is. It's all about them. It isn't about us. And when you're asking those questions, you're finding out about them. Great point, Tim. Yep. yep. Okay, no, Brooks. <laughs> so the next one is uh, kind of similar to this one, but it's the skill of understanding why can presentations make great salespeople. I think some of these scripts um, are part of a CAM presentation, but you touched on it a little bit, Uncle Tim, but how do you internalize those and make it a great presentation? What happens is if you start out with the script on the phone talking to them, whether it's an expired or a FISBO or a past client, and then you go to the next step, which is pre-qualifying them and making sure and confirming the appointment, and then you go and you give your canned presentation. It all leads you down a pathway. And when you go down that path, it comes to a conclusion. So the canned presentation leads you through the whole process with great capital, closes capital. at the end. So, I need to jump in here. <clears throat> yeah. We've said canned presentation. We said canned presentation. We said canned presentation. That's the beginning. That presentation then becomes you. And when you start putting your emphasis on it, when you sell this house, where are you going to go next? It's not when you sell this house, where are you going next? You have to put yourself into this. You have to come out of you and become them. And in doing so, it's different about asking these questions. That's how you become the ultimate professional. It's not just reading the damn script because that won't do it. A hundred times over, it won't do it. You have to have yourself in there. You have to become the presenter and the actor of every word that you're saying. 
it makes a tremendous difference in your success. Okay. So moving on to the next here, number five, we got the skill of lead generation versus um, trying to find a way for people to call me. Um, you know, we talk about this a lot amongst ourselves, you know, meaning my uncle, grandfather and us. And uh, a lot of people want to find that magic pill of just getting people to call them. But uh, to us, obviously, lead generation um, makes your business duplicatable and repeatable. You need to be actively prospecting and generating leads. <laughs> that way you can drive your business forward, maintain um, your business, but also grow your business. Uh, anything you guys want to add to that? that point there's many different ways of lead generating and um, improving your skills as lead generating is going to make you more efficient some people lead generate with um, you know making phone calls to past clients centers of influence for sale by owners expires just listed and just sold others might do it through open houses you know if if you're standing in an open house and you're getting five to 10 people to walk in that open house, and you have a series of questions that you ask those people, and you're gathering information on those people, that's a way of lead generating. If you're working a, uh, a community event, and you're at a table on a weekend, and you're meeting with people, and you have your Remax apparel on, and you're talking and giving out information and asking great questions, that's a way of lead generating. If you're making social media posts, whether it's videos or your listings or something to attract somebody to call in, that's lead generation. The key is, is to do it every day and improve on your skills every day so that you can come become more efficient with it. Dan, anything you'd like to say on that? Well, you know, and it all ties in together because it all goes back to mindset. You have to believe in what you're doing, whether it's the example that Tim just gave you or it's the example of the game of numbers where you're going to say to yourself, every time I make 110 phone calls, I get an appointment. If I said to you, every time you make 110 phone calls, you get an appointment. An appointment is five to $6,000 in commission these days. Would you be willing to make the 110 phone calls? Um, you know, that's only one way. I'm only giving you one example. The, the example of the open house is another one. There's, there's ways to do this that doesn't become humdrum. It has to be up here. You have to say, I'm going to do something that's going to make me money today. And that something could be calling the past client or the center of influence or the hell 20 around a listing you just got. There's many ways to have fun and generate business. Okay, Roxy. All righty. Um, point number six, the skill of pre-qualifying all your clients. Um, this ties into me with uh, the skill of asking good questions and um, managing your time, really, because uh, the art of pre-qualifying all your clients is going to save you a heck of a lot of time, make you more productive and efficient. Um, Uncle Tim, do you want to add to the importance of pre-qualifying? It's important, I don't care if it's a family member or your best friend, you need to ask all the questions. You need to find out, again, we go back to what's their purpose? What's their motivation? Why is this move important to them? You know, and we take it for granted sometimes with the give me deals that come in to not really understand what the real motivation is. So to me, it's it's just important to make sure we're asking great questions and and to to find out what's going on with them. Pre-qualifying. You know, this past weekend I showed some houses, uh, Regina and I, for Kathy, 
to a doctor. And one of the things that I do when I want to ask great questions is, to be quite honest, I sit down on the sofas in the house. And you know what happened with that doctor? He sat right down with me. And we got to sit there in the living room and experience the view out the back and talk about what it is that he wants and all the different places that he's moved from. And we got to know him and build a better relationship with him because we took our time and we sat in the house and asked great questions. I always like to sit there and say, could you imagine yourself living here? I mean, th that porch is amazing, which leads us right into what we're going to talk about with number seven is the skill of making dynamic straight and at the point sales presentations. When you're asking great questions and you're pre-qualifying them and you have the skills to say, you know, seriously, man, that porch is amazing. I mean, I love that, that uh, the woodwork that's out there, you know, we, we had, what, what was the timber, uh, what do you call that again? I can't remember. Um, the timber, timber pine stuff. Yeah, and, and that and just looking at it and saying how nice it is in that view. I mean, that guy was sitting there telling us, I might make an offer on this property because we took our time. So many of us let the buyer walk around or we follow around and try to point out things. But we want them to look, look at things, but we also want them to relax and and I think you can do a more dynamic, straight to the point sales presentation when you can be yourself and you can sit there and ask questions. And you can, it, it, honestly, the, this job is partially acting. I mean, whether you want to admit it or not, if you want to close deals, you've got to be excited. You've got to be dynamic. You've got to give the head nods and the smiles and get them to agree. And you've got to ask closing questions and get them to do it. You know, um, it's all part of asking good questions. Well, I'm jumping in here, Tim. When you're asking those questions and he's sitting down with you, you're mimicking and matching him. You're almost becoming him, which is, man, I like this guy. He's a lot like me. And that's what this thing is all about, because then the connect comes. And when you hit the connection, your job is 75% over with. In that particular case, he wanted to tell us how much he likes to cook and how that kitchen would work for him and that stove and that refrigerator and everything else. So we were really getting into the house, like you said, Dad, and connecting at that point. Yep. So uh, not skipping over seven here, adding to it a little bit, that skill of making a dynamic straight to the point sales presentation. Um, the one thing I kind of want to bring up and touch on, Uncle Tim, if you could, it, Mike has, to, in my opinion, a great uh, process of presentation on a listing appointment to keep your 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 appointment on track in moving forward. Can you explain? I might have the the numbers mixed up, but it's the one minute, the five minute, and how you move one, move three. through that process. Yeah. So if you're asking the questions when you're talking to them on the telephone, and then you pre-qualify them and you go into the one minute presentation, you know, and and I'm not sure. I did send out a script book um, the other day, and I'm not sure if you opened it or read it, but the one minute pre presentation is, hi, thanks again for having me over. I'm excited about getting your home sold and getting it on the market. Do you mind if I take a quick look around? I wrote down three important questions. Number one, do you absolutely want to sell this home? Number two, will you price your home to sell? And number three, do you want me to handle the sale? If they say yes, sign the contract, get the heck out of there. We've talked about this before. The longer you're there, the more promises you make that you can't keep. <clears throat> so that's the one minute. The five minute goes to the next step. I'd like for you all to open up that script book at some point in time today and read the five minute presentation. But when you go through the one minute presentation and the five minute presentation, you're going back over the questions that you asked them over the phone and you're leading them down a path. Like I said, 
that's why it's 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 a canned presentation, but it it leads you down a path to a conclusion. And the conclusion is, will you list your home with me for that price tonight? And when you do that and they say yes, you sign the contracts. If they say no, we go right into number eight, which is the skill of handling objections. And when you when you've studied, let's say the 40 listing or the 40 objections that we've sent out to you, and you know how to respond to them and not argue with them and agree and use some NLP, it's just it's a smoother way to get them to agree to go to the next step and sign the contract. As far as objection handling goes, I'm going to tell you another story of something that just recently happened to us. Regina and I had a, had some people we know from Countersport that wanted to move to the area. I I made a, a, an appointment for us to show a property on a Tuesday, on for to show it on Thursday. So I set the appointment on Tuesday to show it on Thursday. The advertisement in the MLS says that the list, it just came on the market on Tuesday. The advertisement says that they're going to have an open house on Sunday. So we figured the agent's at least going to let it ride through the weekend. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you about handling objections. The agent sends out an email on Wednesday and says, offers received. You need to have your offers in by five o'clock tonight on Wednesday. So it's been on the market literally 24 hours. All offers need to be in by tonight, Wednesday at five o'clock. We're presenting at seven o'clock. Now, our people are coming from out of town. So I call them up and I said, you know, is there any way you can hold off on this? You just literally listed it. I showed, I saw that you were having an open house and I have a cash buyer coming from out of town that's specifically driving four hours to see this house. Are you sure you don't want to talk to the seller and see whether or not they'll wait for us to look at this house tomorrow at 10 a.m.? And he said, can't you just go look at it? I said, no. They went to look at it themselves and put eyes on it. And I guarantee you, it's everything that they want. It, they, it's checked off every box that they want. And if you allow us to look on it, this could be good for the seller. So I didn't hear anything at all Wednesday night nothing at all. Nine o'clock on Thursday morning, the guy calls me and says, well, we presented the offers. I talked to the seller and he wants to wait for you. So now it's 9 a.m. I'm supposed to be in Mount Joy to show this house at 10 a.m. We got to, I got to get a hold of the buyers and say, look, the showing's back on. We took them to the house. We showed them the house and we sold them the house. And the agent calls me and says, you know what? You're a man of your word. I'm glad we waited for you. But I didn't let his objections of, sh of, of offers had to be in at five o'clock and they were presenting it mm -hmm. at seven. I didn't let him win. I asked enough questions and gave enough of a script and led him down a path that he let his sellers allow us to go show it and add one more contract to the mix and we got it. But that's the skills of asking great questions and handling objections. Anybody else wanna talk about handling objections? Brooks, you got anything you wanna throw in there? No, I think that was great. Um, we'll move on here to point number nine, the skill of bringing two parties together. Um, to me, this is huge. A lot of people wanna fight and battle the other party and try to, you know, quote unquote, beat them um, in that, is not what it's about. It's bringing people together and creating a fair deal where everybody wins. Um, we always talk about John Lighty, Uncle Tim, in this scenario, right? Do you want to tell them what yep. he he always John says? Lighty always says a deal has to be fair to everybody in order to go together. And it just so happens last week he had a situation where it got to a point where it was a commercial transaction. The buyers wanted an extension and they wanted to reduce the price because of some issues with highway occupancies and, and ins and outs on the Carlisle Pike. And the buyers and the sellers weren't working it out. So John scheduled a meeting in our conference room downstairs. And John and I attended the meeting 
And it took us about an hour and a half, but by the end of the meeting, we were able to get all parties to agree and sign an addendum to not only reduce the price, but give the extension and work it out. And they're gonna to go to settlement at the end of the month. So it, it it's one of those things where when you need to bring two parties together, it's gotta be fair. It can't be a one-sided deal. And sometimes you just can't do it over a Zoom call or a phone call. It requires face-to-face -face meetings, get everybody in the room together and bring them together. And and it, it was, um, we did a great job and it, it really worked out well. And this was a big deal for John. It was a, you know, a million five transaction that didn't fall apart. And he had both sides of it because we were able to bring the two parties together. I'd like to add to that, that uh, John has one of John's connections who was at that meeting said to me, quote, unquote, your son is really good at what he does. So kudos to you, Tim, on that deal. Thank you. All righty. The, the last point we have here, number 10 for you guys, is the skill of starting every day new and being excited and not caring about what happened the day before. Um, this is what it's all about. Everybody's going to have shit days you know it's gonna <laughs> gonna suck at times but uh the great thing is you start over fresh you got a blank slate every morning when you wake up and it's it's your job to make it a great day and have the mindset and the attitude that you're going to be a winner um yeah uncle tim what do you want to add well you know it just so happens it coincides with the email that i sent out today which says do better you know take baby steps, you know, get together and work with us on this, these mastermind calls. We're a great team when we think out loud together. And that's why it's important to be on these calls. Every day is a chance to do better than the day before. So, you know, it just, the skills that we're talking about today and the email that I wrote today all coincide mm -hmm. together. And you know, I just hope, you know, some of this stuff means something to you and that uh, you understand that if you if you make baby steps and you learn these scripts and you learn the objection handlers and you follow a system and you do time management and you bring people together and you you practice and you manage your time, you will succeed in this business. Don't let this market drag you down. Do not let this market drag you down. If you look at our production from last week, we had a great week. And we had like 19 transactions. And out of that 19 transactions, 13 of them were listings sold. That's why we're not in this buyer's agent situation right now. The buyer's agents, it's very tough right now. And you, if you're going to be a buyer's agent, you have to have skills to close these deals. And if you don't have the skills, call me, call Brooks, call my dad, call Kong. We'll work with you on it. But if you're focusing on listings, they're going to sell. Brent had one last week that, that he put on the market, sold for $40,100 over the asking price all cash, no contingencies on a little two bedroom, two bath townhouse. I mean, it's unbelievable. The people that are fighting over your listing. So if you focus on those listings, you're going to do better in this marketplace. Poppy, anything you want to add to that? Well, yeah. In, you know, what you're now talking about is total mindset. Um, I, I, I'd like to give all the people on this call, a little background about mindset and how you approach things. When you said, don't let this market bother you, there never was a truer statement. Can you imagine myself, Tim, and two other people, Brent, and I believe it was Ken P. We were up here in this building. There were four of us. 
we had one year of a good market and then 2008 hit, which was a terrible time in the real estate business. Everybody said that. Tim, myself, and those two other guys had the mindset that we were going to take this company and make it work. It didn't matter what the market was. That was the teaching that Mike Berry taught us. So with that mindset, we took that company from zero to what it is today. And we built in a lousy market. We, we made more money year after year after year. And it was all because there was nobody and nothing that was going to beat us. We were going to make it happen. If you take that attitude with you today and the rest of this year, you can help but win. I was with I was with this one of our biggest clients on Sunday for about an hour and a half. And this guy is a multi, multi, multi-millionaire. And he said similar things to what we've said in the past. My first mortgage on my house was 11 and a quarter percent. Everybody's complaining about 7% right now. And what he said to me was, Tim, unfortunately, these people in the country right now were, we've been living on like, I, I don't know what the word he used. I can't remember what it was, but it was like the inter, interest rates were fake the last couple of years. When you were at two and 3%, that's not normal. It might have been normal to what you think is normal. But for years and years and years, six and seven percent was the normal for, for 10, 15 years at a time. Six, seven percent was normal. That's where we are now. I believe the interest rates will go down slightly when we come into next year and we come into it being an election year you're going to see these interest rates drop because nobody's going to want to use that at this point, you know, against the other party. So you will see them drop. But will they drop to 3 and 4%? Probably not. We're not going to see that. Will we, get them, back? Will we get them, what's that? I said 5 and a half, 6%. Yep. yep. We'll see that. And, and the market will start generating again. And people will refi out of their 7% mortgages down to the five and a half. And people will then start selling their home um, because they're not going to obtain a 7%. So make those calls, gather those leads, put them in your top producer or your KV core um, database and set them for a next call date and stay in touch with them. And guess what happens? When you start doing that and you follow the system, when they're ready to make the move and when the interest rates come down, you're going to be the agent if you stay in touch with them. But you've got to do it. You've got to stay in touch with them. Don't wait for them to call you. Get on the phone. Have some parties at your house. Attend the functions at the square like the girl, the ladies do in Chambersburg and the guys now. We have, we have Luis and Miguel that do that too. Hi, Luis and Miguel. And Fly and Ryan. <laughs> Flying Ryan's doing it too, but get out and be with the people and do it. Just do it. So, love it. Um, you know, just capping it off here. We listened to something this morning. You are what you think about most of the time. That's Earl Nightingale. Um, adding one step further to me, you are what you do most of the time. So like you're saying, get involved, make the calls be productive. Don't be um, a procrastinator. Do it today. Do right. something and uh, you're not going to uh, help but succeed. I'd like to add one thing to this mix before we close. Yesterday, I listened to a, a podcast by Brian Buffini and he had one of the major economists in this country on that call with him. They did say that all of them predict that the interest rate is going to drop 
to about five and three quarter percent. The interesting thing about that call was they showed in demographics that there is and is going to be because of the pent up demand and the listings not there at this point, we're going to have more buyers and more people interested in buying and selling real estate than any time in this country, 2023 and 2024. So the opportunity is going to be there for us. We just need to get part of the action. Have a great week. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys. And, uh, go ahead. Yeah, have a great week. Um, just wanted to mention that uh, we we got KV Core training here at the office and on Zoom at 10 today. So if you guys want to get involved with that, you have that opportunity. Okay. Thanks a lot, Brooks. We'll see you all next week. Yep, thanks. See you guys.